Well, praise God. Greetings to you in listening land today. My, what a privilege. The Lord has granted us to come your way to tell you the good news that Jesus loves you. Amen. Well, I tell you, it's a good thing to be with you again, once again this evening to just fellowship around the word of God to see what the spirit of God would say to us on this day that we've never seen before in this moment where we've never been before so excited about the opportunity to be able to share this time with you amen this extension of revival center house of prayer mother tucker ministries located in tulsa oklahoma 4501 west 55th place in tulsa sunday school happens every sunday morning at 10 a.m amen morning worship happens at 11 30 a.m. We're so grateful for anyone who does anything regarding uh, the, the, the ministry and uh, the, what's involved with the ministry in the Sunday school. Um, um, Elder Rodney, Pastor's mom and dad, Brian, um, Elder Apollo, Sister Tasha, Mother Ora, Mother Hunt, um, Sister Christina, Sister Sparkle, Sister Cynthia, just the different ones, Brother Rod, just appreciate it to Rachel there, and um, Brother Jeremiah, and uh, uh, just Elder Apollos, if I didn't say them already, but just appreciate those in the Sunday School Consistency, Pastor Regina, of course, over just wonderful, doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ministry. Um, and morning worship happening, of course, and just everything that goes on with the services there. Just God is moving by his spirit and whereof we are glad. You know, um, interesting that this week, um, this, yesterday, as a matter of fact, we actually, um, Mother Tucker actually went to be with the Lord, our mom. She went to be with the Lord on the 27th, which was my birthday, you know, as well. And um, I just, we were just kind of reflecting on that um, earlier as well and how, God so graciously allowed her to be with us for so long and so powerfully. And we got to see such an example of the word of God through her and all uh, just in her faith and her example of the goodness of God. So it's a wonderful thing to carry on the legacy of what she started so many, many years ago. So we honor her even today and this being the memory of her going to be with the Lord and God knows she was worthy of, of um, even the, you say, done. She's just like, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I'm saying about Mother Grace Tucker. But we just honor her um, today. Like I said, this is the anniversary of her departing um, this earth and going to be with the Lord. So we thank God that we're able to carry on. So since then, we've been carrying on by the grace of God. And the grace of God has been prevalent. We dare not deny the power of the grace of God that has been prevalent in our lives in terms of carrying on what God has given. So we thank God for each one that does anything uh, regarding the ministry. We thank God for the food ministry happening on Thursdays from 7 to 8.30 on Thursday evenings. Amen. That was a core part of what she believed in, helping people. Uh, the saying, everybody is somebody. And that is just ringing true, not only in ministry, but in life. You know, everybody is somebody you know that means you say hi to people when you see them act like you see them when you walk and by the people you know what i mean though don't, don't just treat people like they're nobody and all that you say hi you greet people uh, everybody is worthy of our acknowledgement amen so um food ministry happening sunday thursdays from 7 to 8 30 and then immediately following services on sunday evenings again appreciate our Paul's and what is he's been doing on the faithfulness of the sunday evenings and then also uh, brother floyd white with his consistency as well we thank god for him and what god has been using him to do as being a part of the ministry again he's he's been um uh, definitely part of the ministry from years past as well. So we just thank God for him being reengaged with us as well. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, God bless you who have jumped on this evening already. I see uh, Ambassador Jan gone. Amen. God bless you, Ambassador. Sister Angela on. God bless you, Sister Angela. Is that Natalia? God bless you, Natalia. Love you, sweet lady. She's so precious. Love you, Natalia. Good to see your name here as well. And Sister Rachel Chang, good to see you. Uh, Sister Rachel on as well. God bless you all. Amen. We are continuing in the study of the peace of God. Now, y'all, if y'all didn't catch last week with Dr. Coleman, we're going to pray in just a moment. We're just reflecting here for a moment. But if you didn't catch, catch last week's study with um, 
Dr. Coleman, um, when he came on, man, I tell you what, that just took it up to another notch, another level and everything. It is there on our Facebook Live page if you do want to go. I guarantee you, you'll be blessed by it. I, I was talking to Andrew. I think we were texting afterward. I said, I was really blessed by it. She's like, well, you could tell. You couldn't see <laughs> but you. I was truly truly blessed by it and I was really thanking God for just the connection in the Holy Spirit of what the Holy Spirit is saying during this time about peace and you all that's why we're staying on this topic for just a, a little bit longer as well we want to get we want to get out of this what God is trying to deliver to us in this peace and there's a reason he's delivering this message about peace to us we are troubled from every side as Paul says uh, we are troubled on every side we are perplexed we are we are caught up there are things going on that in our lives and everything and not just uh, from a natural standpoint but from a spiritual standpoint things are going on that we need to remain in peace about and we need this peace of God as the scripture tells us that it passes all understanding and all we need that amen so we're continuing in that vein this evening and we're thanking god for what he's going to do um in this time of study as well y'all forgive me i'm i'm looking at the the um, charge on this phone so i'm like okay let me make sure it doesn't run out in the middle because that would be just like the enemy to try to hinder something amen we we aware of his tactics to not today devil <laughs> Amen. Let's pray and we'll get into the word of God. And thank you guys for joining in this evening. Father, right now, thank you for this time tonight. God, thank you for your anointing that is here, causing burdens to be removed, yokes to be destroyed. Oh, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you these airways right now are being captured right now with your anointing. And we thank you that, yes, indeed, burdens are removed, yokes are destroyed. Bodies are healed, souls are saved, minds are renewed, peace is restored in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now for your spirit moving, even right now, healing bodies, Father, causing causing uh, restoration to happen, even now, Father, that as we're plugging into this time in you, that you are orchestrating things on our behalf. You're changing things. You're putting things in order on our behalf, Father, and we thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. God, I say, have your way. Think through my mind. Speak through my vocal cords have your way holy spirit have your way that we leave this place and this time change going from glory to glory to faith to faith in jesus name amen 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 well god bless you again for joining in this evening amen god bless you to diana god bless you woman of god amen let's read our foundational scripture we're going to read philippians 4 and verse 7 again, that's been our foundational scripture for this time of study and the peace of God. And again, I pray that you get something out of this, that you open your heart up and your spirit up to receive just an insight and revelation for what God wants to share with us on this evening. And the reason, uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and I'm reading from the NIV version, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And then we're going to look again this week at Isaiah 26 and 3. Now, we did start that. We looked at that last week. Uh, but again, we got into it with Dr. Coleman, and we were kind of going back over that Philippians 4, 6 and 7. He just dropped some. I'm telling you, that was so rich, you guys. That was just rich. But uh, we did start talking about the Isaiah 26, 3 verse. But I do want to kind of dig into that on this evening as well with you more. So let's read that in Isaiah 26 and 3. And reading this out of the New King James Version, it just says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Amen. May God have blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his precious holy word. Amen. So we have been on the study of the peace of God for a few weeks now. And that's the thing about sometimes when you, you know, I've, I can be like, just kind of 
uh, meditating and all, and the Spirit of God said, oh, that right there, I need to talk about that or whatever. When, when thinking about going into something else, the Spirit of God would just kind of catch me uh, because we don't want to just rush through this time. We don't want to rush through these moments. This time is called a Bible study, so we want to take our time and go through things. Now, for you, as Paul said, in certain places, it might be tedious for you sometimes because we're kind of, you, you see the same title and you hear the same scriptures. So as believers, this is where we have to be aware of how powerful the Word of God is, that where we think we've heard something before and where we think we're very familiar with something as uh, we've heard it before, and uh, the saying goes, familiarity breeds contempt. Because sometimes you can be but you're so familiar with something that you miss the power of it. Jesus said, I can't do any miracles in my hometown because these people don't believe. They 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 were looking at him as a carpenter. They were like, oh, isn't that Joseph's son? You know, isn't that Mary's boy and all that? So he couldn't do miracles there because they had already summed him up that they knew him. Him. They were familiar with them. So as believers, it is our it is our duty as believers to remain open to the word and the revelation of the scriptures. Amen. Never going outside of the, the instructions of the word. Never just going and pulling some kind of outside definition or outside revelation and all that. We all got to wear the same tennis shoes in order to be right with God and all these kind of things and, and all. But no, we're talking about being in the guidelines of the word of God, rightly dividing the word of God. And then in that area of rightly dividing the word of God, we are able to receive insight. We are able to receive instruction. We are able to receive some correction. We are able to receive some 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 uh, instructions that will get us to the next place that God wants us to be from a scripture that you may have read many, many times, from a verse that you might have heard many, many times. But if we open our hearts up, that's where the power comes in. When we open our heart up, we're able to receive more Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say more to yourself. Say more. We're able to receive more revelation. We're able to receive more insight. Well, you can say, wow, I didn't see that before. Wow, I, I never saw that. You know, there's there's that in the scriptures. Amen. Where you have not exceeded everything that's available in the scriptures. Amen. Come on now. We have not exceeded the, the, the revelation of the scriptures, no matter how much we may have studied in the Greek, the Hebrew, and all of the scriptures. We have not. We have not exhausted the power and the life that is in the precious Word of God. And the scriptures tell us that the Word of God is quick. It is powerful. It is living. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit. Amen. It determines the intentions of our hearts. So it, it, it it's a two-edged sword. So that means it's cutting as it's coming out and it's cutting as it's coming into you. Amen. So it's, it's doing what it does. And we, I don't know about you, but I want the word to do what it can do. Amen. We want to be in that place where we want the word to do what the word does. And that word is set by God. It will accomplish what it has been sent, hallelujah, to accomplish. It will not return void. The word does not fail. Hallelujah. We might fail and we might mess up, but the word of God does not fail. So that means if he says we are healed by the stripes of Jesus, if we're not healed by the stripes of Jesus, then we need to get into the revelation of that scripture. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's not conditional. That's not some timing. That is permanent. That is the word of God. That's a promise that we have. So if it's not happening in my life, if I'm not 
not seeing it, then I don't want to say the word doesn't work. Oh, I haven't seen that happen before. I don't want to go into that vein. I want to get my mind in renewed into the word of God to hear because there's something that I'm not hearing. Amen. If we're not seeing the word working in our life, there's something that we're not hearing. There's something that we're not getting from the word that we still need to get. That's why we come to church. That's why we spend time in Bible study. That's why we spend time in our devotion in the word of God, because we all working on something. Amen, somebody. We are all working on something. We all got situations in our lives that we are dealing with and walking through and, and trying to navigate around. So we need the insight of the word of God to help us and to abide us what we need. Those are like we obtain, we, we grab a hold to mercy. We grab a hold to that mercy, that grace, that mercy to help us in our time of need. And that is in the word of God. So you plugging in on a consistent basis, though it may seem familiar, though it may seem, oh, this is what, no, you plugging in, you are opening yourself up to receive from God. You, you're opening yourself up to receive insight from the word of God. Now, that revelation was, as we talk about the that word, uh, rhema, talks about, it's like that revelation, when the word of God is spoken to you, when that word of God gets spoken to your heart, oh my Lord, nobody can take that away from you. Something in your spirit, hallelujah, something in your spirit will click and say, oh, that's it. Mm, mm, mm. Something in your spirit will click and say, oh, that's it. Oh, that's healing. Ah, ah. My God, y'all getting me worked up this evening already. Holy Ghost already coming up in here. But that that word of God will click in our spirit. And you'll hear something and tells you that, oh, you are healed. That, that that situation has changed. Hallelujah. And you'll feel the power of God flowing through your body. My God. And you'll sense in your spirit, oh, something's changed. Like the woman with the issue of blood, when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she immediately felt a change take place in her body. That revelation that flows through you will cause a change to take place in your body. That revelation that flows through you will cause a change to take place in your bank account. There'll be a, a change that clicks and says, oh, I got it now. I, I, I see it now. I, I see what God wants to do. I, I see how to go towards that situation. That, that revelation from the word of God will cause relationships to be set in order because of the revelation of the word of God. So that revelation of the word of God is what will generate this peace that we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That peace that passes all understanding comes when we yield ourselves to him. When we yield ourselves to him, we're going to experience that peace. And that comes just from understanding, God, I love you. God, I appreciate you. God, I trust you. God, I acknowledge you in every situation. And that peace begins to flow in that. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that was some preliminary things there. I pray you were blessed by the touch my soul as well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But let's look at this scripture in Isaiah chapter chapter 26 of Isaiah. And I, I want to read verses, the, the verses one and three that go along with that Isaiah 26 and two. But we're going to read verses one and three with that as well. Just going to read through that and get the, the whole message of that, what Isaiah was saying 
in that passage of scripture. Amen. I believe that God has something for us this evening. If you haven't already gotten something out of what was just shared by the spirit of God, I know that just that about took me on out right there. Amen. Glory to God. But in Isaiah chapter 26, and we read verse three earlier, but I want to read verses, like I said, verses one, two, three, and four. Okay. So let's read through that. And I'm going to I'm going to read in the uh, the New King James Version of that, okay? I'm going to read that there, and we may read it from another translation as well. But in verse 1, Isaiah 26 and 1, it reads, In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Verse 2, he says, Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. And then in verse 3, he says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And verse 4 says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. Amen. We'll stop right there. But we want to get the essence of what he was saying when he said, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Amen. And this word peace from this uh, passage of scripture in Isaiah 26, this word peace is again tying in with our uh, Philippians Four version uh, definition of peace as well, but it ties it in. Um, it talks about shalom, and that word peace. Thou will keep you. He will keep you in perfect peace. Is saying he's going to keep you complete. He's going to keep you sound. He's going to keep you in well-being, the welfare. He's going to keep you in those elements. That's the the peace there. And and interesting too how that perfect peace when it said you will keep him in perfect peace that that's almost saying he will keep you in peace peace because peace represents perfection amen it represents completion amen it represents wholeness as this word shalom represents it talks about nothing missing and nothing broken so the scripture saying you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. And this has to do with being steadfast, right? This is where you, you have set your mind on God. Amen. You have set your mind on the things of God. You have set your mind to trust in God. You have set your mind to be in that, as the scripture says, that 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 wall of salvation. <laughs> Amen. That there's a there's a salvation for walls, and there's there, that salvation is protecting us. Hallelujah. And it says, open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Hallelujah. Amen. So you keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed, which is when I stay in that place of salvation, when I stay in that place of safety. What does Psalm 91 say? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There's, there's safety in him. There's safety in salvation. Amen. Amen. If you saved, you got safety. Amen. You got safety, and that alone is peace right there, knowing that you are safe. As the song says, safe in his arms. 
Hallelujah. Sometimes people want to go into the natural realm and get, you know, guns and all this kind of things. And I got to protect my house. I got to protect myself. I mean, I, you know, got to do what you got to do. And I understand all that and everything. But let me tell you something. The angels that are encamped round about us, the angels that are encamped round about you, the angels that have been sent to minister to you, to minister salvation to you, they're encamped around about you. They're going to provide more safety to you than you could ever muster up with all the guns, all the rifles in the world. The angels that are encamped around you are going to protect you from hurt, harm, and danger. That's their assignment. Amen. That's the angel's assignment to protect Amen. To minister to those who are heirs of salvation. How many heirs of salvation do we have here? We are heirs of salvation. Amen. And because we are dwelling in this place of salvation, this is where, this is where we get our steadfast mind from. Amen. So in James, it talks about how if we're bouncing all over the place, we're being double minded and we're unstable in all of our ways. Right. So if we can get steadfast on what we have in God and how he is our protector, how he is our keeper how he is our controller, how he is the one that we have said, God, you are in charge of my life. I have yielded my life to you. I have yielded my soul to you. Hallelujah. So as we have yielded to him, that we are placing ourselves within the shelter of the Almighty. And because we have placed ourselves in the shelter of the Almighty, then he will keep us he will keep us in that perfect peace. Amen. And as we keep our minds stayed on him, we are able to stay in that peace. Now, you know, because we can jump out of stuff. Y'all, sometimes, you know, I would work with people on computers sometime and trying to help solve some, some problems and everything happened on the computer from time to time. And there are people who are just clickers, just click. They just click, you know, like, you know, some people might be on this line right now who know what I'm talking about. But, but some people are just clickers, right? So sometimes people can't just hold up and let God do what he does without jumping out. You know, jumping out. Well, God, I, I need this done right now. So I need to go get this done. I need to get in this situation and that I need to go. So we end up making a bigger situation than what the situation was because of not just receiving the peace of God and trusting God to do what only he can do. Now, if you can do it yourself, of course you do it. Amen. Trust God. Believe God that what you're going to do is going to honor him and all that. But if you could do it yourself, then you do it. He's given the ability. He's given you the strength. He's given you the understanding, the know-how, the provision, the resources. Amen. You pray about it and you receive the peace of God regarding it. But if you can do it, do it. Amen. But those things, and y'all know those things that we can't do nothing about. There are some things we're facing we can't do nothing about. We didn't try to A to Z. A to Z didn't work. And we now we know we have to trust God to resolve that matter, to provide for that matter, to heal in that matter. Because we've done everything that we could do. And as Paul said in, in the book of Ephesians, having done all to stand, we stand. Amen. We stand. And how long do you stand? You stand until you see what you've been standing for. Come. Amen. That's how long you stand. You don't stand and then go, oh, I've been standing for two weeks now. Oh, I've been standing for two hours now. You know, keep looking at your watch and stuff. You know how that works when you're looking at your watch and clock about something and everything. When you're just trying to clock it and everything, it always takes longer when you're just trying to watch it happen. Amen. But when you get in this place where you say, I'm standing, now this is this is where we get into this this mindset of the, the one who keeps his mind, who who is steadfast. Now this 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 has to do with come hell or high waters, hell or low waters, 
good days, bad days, happy days, sad days, I am choosing to stand on your word. I am choosing to trust in what you have spoken. I am choosing to remain steadfast. Amen. If you are in a ship and the ship is moving and it's a storm outside, the last thing you want to do is jump out of the ship into the ocean where the storm is happening. No, you want to stay in the safety of that ship. Amen. You got to stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Stay, stay, stay in the boat. Amen. Stay in the boat because that's where safety is. Amen. So that represents us being steadfast, that we're not being moved. It's good to say be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're not being moved by everything. We're not being tossed about with the storms. We're not being tossed around with the winds and the waves because such and such said this. Oh, did you hear what's happening over here? Oh, did you hear what they said over there? Oh, another uh, pandemic is coming. Oh, did you hear they're about to lay off people and all? Oh, did you hear? Oh, that sickness is going around. Did you? All of those things are are those storms. Those are those are waves. Those are things that can take you up and just toss you to and fro with it. But when we're steadfast, hallelujah, when we're steadfast and we know that he will keep us in perfect peace because we're keeping our mind stayed on him, when we're steadfast, those things might be happening around us. It might be happening all around you. You might even look up and see all this chaos happening around you. But for you, Saints, you are steadfast. Amen. You know what God has spoken. You know the word of God says no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment will come to nothing. You know that for yourself. And you got that. And you're letting it be a, a part of what you know about God and his character and who he is. And you're allowing that to, to keep you. Amen. You're allowing that to keep you. You, you, you are allowing that to keep you. And then as you allow that to keep you, then you've got that peace, that peace that passes understanding where everybody around you might be panicking. <laughs> everybody around you might be going, did you not know what they said? Did you not hear what's happening in the economy? And you're walking around with this joy in you and you're acting like ain't nothing wrong in everything. You act like you don't understand what the news reporters said and all. And you're like, no, nah, because my, my hope doesn't come from the world. Hallelujah. My peace doesn't come from what the world gives. My peace comes from me keeping my mind steadfast on God. Amen. So he's going to keep me. He's going to provide for me. He's going to protect me. He's going to make a way for me because he's done it before and he will do it again. Amen. We know our God. The Gen Daniel said they who know their Lord will be strong and do exploits. This is why we have to keep our hearts open to the word of God, to hear what the spirit of God is saying to us, because there are some deposits being made in our spirits. Hallelujah. There's some deposits of the word of God being made in our spirits that we're going to need to withdraw from. Amen. We're going to need to withdraw from. Amen. And if nothing's there for you to withdraw from, then you're going to be depleted. 
You will be in a corner somewhere rocking and going, oh yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, you'll be doing all that. But if you let the word of God be deposited into your spirit and you receive it, amen, you receive it with an open heart, then the word of God is able to get some stuff into you that's going to keep you. Amen. That will rise up in you in the midst of the situation. It'll rise up in you so much to the point where you'll look back and go, man, you know what? I didn't cuss them out at all. My goodness, God, you really are showing up in this situation. You really are showing yourself strong in this situation. You didn't react to the situation. You allowed the peace of God to keep you. In the situation, that button in you that normally wants to react and overreact and be drama in the situation, you'll find all of a sudden the peace of God will be keeping you. Hallelujah. And you're like, wait, before that would have broke me down. Before that would have took me into another place. But now, because of the peace of God that passes understanding, he is maintaining you. Amen. Amen. He's maintaining you. And that's what we want. We want to be maintained. We don't need to be acting a fool like everybody else. I know sometimes it's good to feel, you know, you want to feel like you, you're normal and you want to feel like you can blend in with everybody and you want to kind of identify with others and everything. You, there's that natural human tendency to want to be able to relate and to be relatable. But let me tell you something, relating to people can cause spiritual death. Wanting to relate with people can cause you to compromise in what the Spirit of God is doing in you. Wanting to relate with people can cause you to miss what God is trying to do in a moment through you. Just because you're wanting to be relatable and wanting to, to blend in. Amen. Don't try to blend in. Try to stand out in the Word of God. Amen. Let the Word of God be your stand out. Amen. Let that be something that causes you to... Now, I know there's a lot going on here, but you can say, but God is keeping me. Amen. God is my source. They say they're going to lay off people and all that. God is my source. They say we need this bill paid over here, and if you don't get it by this day, God is my source. Amen. The doctor's report comes back with something negative. You declaring that God is your healer. Amen. Thank you, doctor, for that. Thank you. You are doing a wonderful job in doing what you have been trained to do. Thank you so much. Mother Tucker would always say that the doctors are practicing medicine, practicing medicine. Amen. So we ought to practice our healing, practice our trusting God, practice our receiving this peace. Just practice it. Amen. Practice it. You might not even feel like it's genuine or whatever, but practice it. Practice this peace of God. Practice trusting the grace of God. Practice this thing. Practice it. Amen. This, this thing comes by us doing it. James talks about that. We're not just a hearer of the word. We are doers of the word. So when we hear something about peace and the being steadfast, having our minds being steadfast on the things of God, we need to practice that. Amen. We need to start walking that out. That's our part. Amen. That's our part, to be able to walk that out, to be able to embrace that. And even then that, ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is able to help you, and he will carry you through. Amen. So it's not just about you being able to do it in your own strength. Hey, in our strength, we can't do much in our own strength. Amen. So that ain't even about where it's coming from. What it's about is us taking that step of faith. Amen. That step of faith and, and recognizing that God has given us something that really passes all understanding. Something that we we try to put a we you know, we 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 
you know, we are human. We want to figure everything out, right? You know, this happened because of A, B, C, D. This happened because of C, D, E. Uh, you know, we, we want to figure things out and all. And a lot of times when people come to us talking about things and all, we want to offer a solution. I know I do. I'm like, okay, you're saying that? Okay, well, you can do this, that, and the other. And, and that way you don't have to go through that like that. Again, that's that's me, you know, in terms of my thing. And I know there's many of us like that who just want, okay, let me help you solve that. Amen. And then we know not everybody wants things to be solved. They just want to kind of be able to talk about it. You know, just be able to talk, talk, talk and talk about it. You know, they just want to be able to keep talking about it and everything. And that that kind of gets old after a while and everything. Because you're like, OK, you just want to keep talking about it. OK, I got to go. I love you. I appreciate you. OK, I'll catch you. Because you don't want to pick nothing. You just want to talk about it. And it's okay to be a, a listening ear and be able to hear people out and all that. Because sometimes people need that. I know I need that sometimes. Just hear me out for a minute. We're going to come to God after we talk. talk about it. But let me get this out, you know, real quick here. But I do want to hear what God is saying in that matter. And so a lot of times we can kind of get caught up in that moment of just being in the, in the moment of a situation. We can get caught up. In that, but the Spirit of God wants to intervene with us embracing that peace. Amen. To to even to the place where you know the, this 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 thing about peace is that we have to we have to get ourselves in that mindset of peace. What did the scriptures say that we read um, earlier? Whatever things are just, whatever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise. We have to, on purpose, think on these things. That's what the scriptures tell us. Think on these things. So we can create peace. We can create peace by yielding our minds and our thoughts to what God has said. Amen. We can create peace. How about that? Did you know you had that kind of power? Did you, did you know? Did you realize you have that kind of power? That you can create peace, amen, by taking to heart what God has said, amen. And when we take to heart what God has said, then that changes our thoughts. You know, when we're not in peace, you know, that's because sometimes we're allowing our thoughts to overtake us. that are going in negative directions, right? Because sometimes we're allowing things to, to get to us, to frustrate us, you know, to cause us to not be in peace. Amen. We can hear situations sometimes, but it is what's that you can't control what happens to you, but you can control your response to what happens to you. Amen. So you don't always have to jump off the mountain just because everybody else is jumping off the mountain, off the cliff. Amen. You don't always have to do that. You can say, wait a minute, I don't need to jump. I can receive the peace of God. Amen. So you have that control of how you respond. You don't always have to give that person who is pushing those buttons on you. You don't always have to give them that energy that they've been so used to you giving them. You know, some folk are used to you giving them that, that energy that you give them when they push that button. They know how to push it. Y'all know. Y'all know. Don't try to act like y'all don't know. Y'all know. We all know people who know how to push them, but they know exactly what button to push. But when they push that button and you don't respond because you have chosen to say, I'm keeping my peace today. I'm, I'm keeping my peace today. My peace is worth more than getting into this bickering situation with you. My peace is worth more than me getting into an argument with you. My peace is worth more than me getting myself out of where I'm at in order to come to where you are in the place of drama and all the things that you want me to respond with. Not today. Not today. We, we gonna live this thing different. Amen. We're going to walk this thing out differently today. Amen. One day at a time, we're going to walk this thing out differently. Amen. And when you make it through that day, then you can say, thank God, made it through that day. Thank you, Lord. And then get ready for the next day. But one day at a time, don't try to jump too far ahead because sometimes that can be discouraging because you know what it took for you to, to not respond in that one moment because they was really pushing and poking them buttons and you was 
strong enough by the grace of God to not give in to it. And sometimes if you start thinking about what it took for you to not give in and think about how many times you might have to do that again, and that can be overwhelming to you say. So just bring it back one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. God, we made it through today. Oh, God, we made it through that hour. Oh, God, we made it through that minute. Amen. Oh, Lord, we made it through that second. Whatever it takes for you to embrace this peace that God wants us to experience. Amen. There's too many things the enemy is coming. He is coming at us with. He's coming. He's coming. The scriptures talk about it. He's, he's going about as a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. Amen. And the enemy don't play fair, saints. The enemy don't play fair. He's not a fair player. You can think you can make a deal with him, but he ain't going he ain't gonna keep his side of the deal. Uh, now you don't bother me, Mr. Devil, and then I won't bother you. And we'll just go our ways and do he ain't gonna keep his end of the deal. He's not. So you gonna need to just be ready. Amen. You just gonna need to be ready and you need to know where the peace of God is for you. Amen. You need to know the situations that always get you to go in a different direction. Recognize those situations and then implement what the word of God is giving us to implement. Whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. You got to change the thoughts. Because if you keep thinking the same thoughts, you're going to keep experiencing the same thing. And you're going to keep going in that cycle over and over again until you say enough is enough. Hallelujah. And you know how you get to that enough is enough? By hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. By hearing the word of God. By hearing the word of God. And every time you hear the word of God, like I said earlier, there's some revelation and some insight that's getting deposited into you. So you'll be able to say, I'm not going to give in to that this time. I'm not going to let that take me out this time. I'm going to apply the the word of God. Where did that come from? Well, that came because you've been spending some time in the word of God. You've been spending time allowing the word of God to get in you. Y'all know we can we can read the scriptures. We can do our devotions and all. My mother Tucker would say, you might be reading the word, but are you letting the word read you? Amen. Are you letting it get in you? You might be in the word, but are you letting the word get in you? Amen. And that's important because if we're just doing things as a check mark, oh, well, I spent my 15 minutes in devotion today. Amen. Okay, well, I did my prayer time. Okay, amen. Check, check. If we just kind of get in that mode now again, those are good habits to have. Amen. There's the amen. Hallelujah. At the same time, though, we want to make sure we're doing these things, allowing our spirits to be open to receive what God is wanting to impart to us fresh. Amen. In the spirit of faith and not just going through and the scriptures talk about the traditions of men. The traditions of men are what causes faith to not work. Because they're being caught up in traditions. Well, that's not how we do it. Oh, that's not how I learned it. Oh, that's not how I was taught to. Me. Oh, we always do it this way. We always, you know, those are traditions. Now, there's, there's nothing always, there's nothing always wrong with traditions, but you gotta have the right traditions in place. Amen. Traditions that are filled with the word of God, that are filled with you being receptive to the word of God. It's time is over for the know-it-all saints. We don't have know-it-all. We, we don't know everything. The scripture said we understand in part. We prophesy in part. We in part. You know, we don't have a, a full grasp of this thing. But we are walking it out in the revelation and the insight that the spirit of God gives. And as we walk that out, then that's when we're going to experience higher levels. Hallelujah. That's when we're going to experience going from faith to faith. Hallelujah. And we'll experience going from glory to glory. Amen. And that's when you find, sometimes when you pray, it happens. When you start getting into that place of faith, when you get into that place where you've been receiving from God, you've been receiving the things of God, and your heart has been open, you don't have those blockers going on. You know, there's blessing blockers. 
right? There's things that, that block the doubt and unbelief, all those things that come in and that hinder the flow of God in our lives, that when we spend time in the Word of God, when we allow the Word of God to catch us fresh, when we allow the Word of God to catch us, we're able to receive then that peace, Hallelujah. And that peace, that peace got some levels to it, y'all. That that peace, that peace got some levels to it. As I said, it passes all understanding. So there's some levels to this peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Amen. Being complete in him. It has in it being your well being your prosperity. Hallelujah. Come on now. We got to know what the word of God says about this stuff so we can know how to stand. Hallelujah. Know how to stand. It ain't over. The devil want to make you think it's over. The devil want to think, make you think that you can't get it, that you can't receive it, that no, you haven't been doing this right. Oh, you haven't been doing that right. No, the devil is a liar. Amen. He's a liar and he's defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the scriptures, he will keep us in perfect peace. He will keep us in perfect peace. He will keep us in peace, peace. I know that scripture in Nehemiah says grace, grace, peace, peace. Some, some words we just want to lock in and meditate on. Peace, peace, peace. Because we trust in him. Amen. And that trust, and you know, that trust can be kind of, uh, kind of, um, you can be kind of all, all over the place when we talk about, oh God, I trust you. Oh God, I trust you. Oh God, I trust you. Well, it shows up how we respond. You know that? How we, how we trust God shows up in how we respond when situations come up. That's what shows how much we trust God. That's why that song, Oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Because sometimes we find out that our trust is not, not too good because we overreact in certain situations. But that trust is shown in how we respond when situations arise. That's when trust is shown. Now, trust is supposed to be, because it's supposed to be us relying on. Trust has in it leaning on. You lean on it. Like, I can lean on this wall back here. I'm trusting that wall. I'm leaning on it. That's what trust means. But that trust can be compromised if something happens. Amen. So, even talk about Leaning on the wall. If I'm leaning on the wall and I'm in a chair and the chair begins to slide out from under me or what have you, then now I'm compromised. You know, what am I doing? Okay, I'm, my, my trust is compromised, right? So I got to get my security back and know that this is what I'm leaning on. Amen. So when things happen in our lives, we say we trust God. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I, you know, all that we can kind of get into that vein. But it shows up in how we respond in situations. When situations happen, how are we responding? That peace, that's a sign of trust. That peace is a sign that you know He's in control. That peace is reminding you that your heart is set on him, that your mind is steadfast on him, that you have been settled in that. Amen. That you're not double-minded about that. That you have settled yourself. I'm steadfast in you, Father. I'm steadfast in your salvation. I'm set in it. I am settled in it. <laughs> I'm secure in it. Glory to God. I am set in what you have given me. And I have peace. I have peace. And that peace passes all understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, right now, thank you for this time this evening. 
Ooh, God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word does not return void. It does accomplish what you sent it to accomplish, Father. I thank you. And Father, I thank you that even as we've talked about peace and how you keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, who's steadfast on you. I thank you right now that that peace is showing up. It's showing up now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for that calm assurance. That calm assurance. That, that nothing missing. That nothing broken, Father. Thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. 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 I just hear the Spirit of God just saying, breathe in that peace of God. Just take a deep breath and just breathe in that peace of God. Just breathe that in. Hallelujah. God, I thank you right now for comforting the hearts and minds of your people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you that you are indeed perfecting that which concerns us. You are indeed providing for every need, Father. You're the need meter, and we thank you that you're providing according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you. The need is met in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the need is met. The need is met. The supplication is mentioned. The supplication is made. Now the peace, the need is met in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for healing. Thank you for healing virtue flowing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Anxiety, healing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Healing. That's peace. Peace replaces anxiety in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for every blood disease that is healed now in the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus. Thank you for every heart condition being healed in the name of Jesus. Every un ungodly disease right now is healed in the name of Jesus. Cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure healed in the name of Jesus. We come against the foul spirit of infirmity and we say you've got to go now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now the peace flows. Now the peace flows. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And Father, thank you for loved ones being brought into the kingdom from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We keep our loved ones covered in prayer. We thank you, Father, that their souls have been called into the kingdom. We thank you for such a time as this, Father. Thank you that ministering angels are going across their path, causing those to go across their path to minister life to them, Father. You said you're not willing to any perish, but that all come to repentance. So we thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for relationships being restored. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing. We thank you for it now. Mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, husbands and wives, relationships, cousins, nieces, nephews, relationships restored. Friendships restored. Healthy relationships. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe God is moved by his spirit. Woo. Bless his name. Hallelujah. I just hear the spirit of God saying, just raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. Sometimes we can get comfortable in things not being the way they should be according to the word of God. And the spirit of God is just saying, raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. It's yours. Just raise your 
expectations. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. My God. Well, thank God for his presence here that has visited us this evening. Man. Whew. I'm just, I'm just trying to land, land the plane a little bit here in Jesus' name. Thanking God for what he's doing by his spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And we just always want to offer an opportunity for you to give because a lot of times in, in giving, we are connecting with what God has done in the spirit. You know, a lot of times that's the spiritual connection that we are tying something in from a physical place that connects us with what we've gotten in the spirit. So there's an opportunity to give. That's why we make sure we offer that because we want to make sure we're allowing that opportunity to connect Again, staying in faith, staying in faith, amen, and allowing that peace of God to flow. So if you desire to give, you can give via Cash App, a dollar sign, MT Ministries. You can give via PayPal at info at mothertuckerministries.org. You can give online at www.mothertuckerministries.org. You can mail it in to P.O. Box 773 Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. Or as uh, Pastor Dad Bryan says, if you're in the area, you can bring it on by. 4501 West 55th Place in Tulsa, Sunday School Happening, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., morning worship at 11.30 a.m. Amen. Appreciate uh, Pastor Regina. Just appreciate her spirit and her heart and doing a phenomenal, just a phenomenal job and thanking God for His grace on our live, appreciate Elder Rodney, Elder Apollos, Pastor Mom and Dad Brian, and, and shout out to uh, Pastor Dad Brian. His birthday was uh, this past weekend, uh, so we celebrate him and thank God for him um, and who he is. He is 82, I think, 80-something um, years old, and he is just acting like he's 16, 17, 22, just moving by the spirit of God and God's grace is on his life. So we thank God for him and we definitely celebrate him on his birthday as well. Thank God for food ministry happening on Thursday evenings it's from seven to eight 30 on Thursday evenings. Thank God for uh, every volunteer that comes and helps with food ministry. I know there's a whole, some, some folks may not understand. There's a whole process that goes with food ministry. So again, if you ever want to volunteer to be a part of what happens there, um, it's, there's the opportunity to be, uh, to participate in that. And I tell you, the people are precious. The ones that, uh, come through that are, that are receiving, uh, from it and everything. They're precious, precious people, precious lives. And they're all important to God. Amen. As we said earlier, everybody is some body. Amen. So we thank God for what's happening there on Sunday evenings. Um, um, Seven o'clock. Oh, excuse me. Six thirty on Sunday evenings. A service is happening. Appreciate it again, Elder Apollos, on that, and uh, Brother Floyd helping out with that as well. We just thank God for what He's doing. We thank God for Him sending laborers into the vineyard. The laborers are being present. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. Well, praise God again. God bless you for joining in on this evening, the study. Amen. I see some some birthday shout outs to me. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Regina, thank you, Sister Diana, and thank you all. It's been a, a blessing of a celebration uh, for myself as well. Very thankful. Uh, uh, I'm just grateful for what what God is doing and, and to even be here. Amen. As like some folk didn't make it, but we made it, and we thank God for that. Thank God for all the love and the, the well wishes and all uh, regarding that. Amen. Well, God bless you this evening. Again, appreciate you joining in. Thank you, Natisha. Thank you, sweet niece. Amen. God bless you as I'm shouting out who's on tonight, my niece Tisha. Man, I love you so much, Tisha. It's good to see you on here. God bless you. She's an anointed niece. Oh, that, that child right there, she's just so graced. She don't even realize how graced she is, the power of God just all over her. But love you, Tisha. Love you so much. Uh, Sister Diana, God bless you. Again, thank you for the birthday wishes there. Again, Pastor Regina, thank you. Again, thank you. Love you so much. 
Thank you. Sister Sparkle, God bless you, woman of God, for being on. Love you so much. Sister Sparkle, this is a blessing. Blessing indeed. Amen. God bless. Amen. Ambassador Jan, God bless you, woman of God. Love you so much. Appreciate your diligence, Ambassador Jan. You're so faithful. God's grace to you. Sister Rachel Chang, God bless you. Sister Rachel, amen. Love you so much as well. God bless you. Amen. I believe her, her niece, uh, Rashayla, came on as well. God bless you, Rashayla. Love you so much. Amen. Um, I believe I'm running. I don't know if he's still on yet, but my nephew, Scott, Scott, uh, Scotty came through. I mean, him and I have this thing going with nephew and uncle thing, so that's a good thing there. But, Scotty, I don't know if you're still on, but love you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for that call as well. Brother Kenneth Bryan, God bless you, man of God. Not sure if you're still on, but God bless you. Sir, amen. Sister Angela, God bless you, Sister Angela Anderson. Her birthday is tomorrow, y'all. Angela's birthday is tomorrow. God bless you, Sister Anderson. And Sister Natalie Duran, God bless you. Natalia, excuse me, I, I, Natalia. God bless you. If you're still on, I'm not sure if you are or not. But God bless anybody who came on. For the, if you're here for the whole time and you came through for a moment, God bless you. God bless you. Well, God's grace and peace be with you. As you say, peace and love be multiplied to all. Put some light to the show you friendly. And we'll see you again next time in Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you.